Hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a pouring down, soaking wet, um, Friday the 22nd of March. It's like 45, 46 degrees out here, and uh, I'm going to have to make this quick, because, uh, yeah, it's pouring down rain. It caused me to fog the car up. So, uh, welcome to Friday. A wet Friday. The rain doesn't stop until there's a slight chance of just cloudiness next Saturday. So, yeah, welcome to the Northwest this time of year. 49, cloudy, with light rain. Mm -hmm. It was wet. Yes, no matter what, horrible. it was wet. Well, Mama, I'm yeah. going to do a quick little goodbye morning second. Yeah. Whatever you call this thing we do when we get to work. <laughs> I'm a thing. Because a little woman's working on a skeleton crew up there today. Yeah, I got to go. So, uh, have yourself a wonderful Friday. And before you know it, the weekend will begin. Yes. All righty. Have a wonderful day. You too, baby. Love you. See you. Bye. I love you. Bye bye now. Bye. So we're back on this big old bad mamma jamma. Got all the control modules and DME and all that put back from all the testing. And what did I do? With? Hold on a second here. The reverser module. So. I'm not going to take, I don't know what kind of resistor, or if that's a fusible link of some sort, but they're giving me new cables. Look at that thing. Look at how it looks like it's been mounted. Hopefully tested it. Probably what they're doing. Yeah, both of them have marks on them. Probably performed some kind of test on them. But anyway, it's sitting right there but the cables go to the starter motor which is underneath the tank right in here so i hope it doesn't have a full tank tank full tank of gas because i need to take the tank off to get to those cables we'll get this this bad boy back together i had a guy with a it was a little uh, oddly enough it was a little 125 quad and um it had a a transmission had the engine and a transmission thing that was it was belt dry but it had a little transmission it was a forward and reverse and um it held i don't know about four or five hundred cc's of oil but you know when you change it it was clean but anyway all the bolts were all marked and um we all know this guy he was it was a hothead he always he thought you know he's one of the guys who go around stealer ships stealer ships like everybody's out to rip him off, you know. I don't know where you're going to get those kind of things, but that ain't us. But anyway, so he comes to pick the thing up. And it just so happened that I lined that bolt. When he torqued it back down, lined up in the exact same spot. So he comes in freaking out that we didn't change the, the transmission oil in it. And, um... <laughs> service manager he was this this is in the good old age you know so certain this guy's just known to be trouble so the service manager goes out there and freaks out on him he goes you know as he changes he works right next to me he doesn't miss stuff like that and so he keeps going on and on the customers so he goes out there reaches under and pulls the drain plug out and dumps it right out in the parking lot there are you sob he goes look at the clean oil coming out of there and just walks away left the guy Oh man, that was, that was funny. He is the gentleman that got all the woods locked down around here. And now that's like a countrywide thing, but he single-handed. He went out on some private property and uh, hurt himself riding a quad. I think he broke a leg, broke his back, whatever it was. And um, sued, I think it was a warehouse or company. And now from ever since then, all the woods are locked down. Can't touch them. You used to be free to roam wherever you want. And within about four or five years, dual sports all but ceased to exist. When I was a kid, you know, because I was, what, just about, we might as well say I was 15 when I moved up here from Texas. And um, everybody had dual sports. First thing I got when I got a driver's license, because you could get your driver's license for a motorcycle, you get your motorcycle permit six months before you're allowed to drive a car. And um, so anyway, 
you know, I had a XL250 Honda. And, um, yeah, just explore everywhere. All them dual sports I had over all those years. This was somewhere in the late, I think it's in the 90s when that lawsuit thing happened. Somewhere in there. And, um, I, when I come back here in 2000, um, you know, first thing I did, bought a, a used DR650, a 2003 that we had taken in. And um, I go exploring around and come back and I'm like, what the heck's going on? All the woods are locked down. He goes, don't you know? He goes, he comes in here all the time. I go, no way. He's not even with us now, that old dude. Anger and stuff like that. Karma has a way of coming back and getting you. But uh, plus he'd be like 90 something years old now anyway. <laughs> How did I get off on that subject? Holy moly. Well, let's get this reverser module. And it's all because the CAN bus connection is not responding. And it sees that because the bike, every time you start your bike up, does a quick little self-test. And um, yeah, when it checks in on the reverser module, control module, it says he ain't talking. The module is no longer speaking to nobody. So uh, they had to kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> so she's all happy again with her overpriced reverser control module unit or however they technically call it let's take this old land yacht for a quick little rip always check tire pressures on anything that comes through not having anybody that I've laid a hand on roll out without a with low tires or worse grossly overfilled tires but it wasn't bad it was seven and a half low in the front and I think six low in the rear she should have been a uh, should have been throwing some codes when it was, I didn't ride it because it, it was just in for the no reverse. It's been a while since I've taken a normal test ride. Everything's been brand new and I gotta do my short, you know, parking lot rips. It's been, been like yesterday, it's just been that season's coming around and everybody's everybody's getting ready and man just it's like 110 miles an hour i think it's more we're just getting busy it's probably nowhere near as busy as it's gonna get it's just that you know everything's been kind of laid back <laughs> and casual and all of a sudden go and you're like whoa Got the suspension in cruise mode, and she just boing boing. Hey, I see a little RC car humming along there. That looked like a nice rock crawler there. She's all squatted, or the guy could be doing different things with it. I don't know. Hey, we haven't taken this route in a while. Let's let's feel some bumps and see how the suspension works. But well, it's gonna be soft. He's in he's in cruise mode. She's just boring, boring. That is cruise mode. <laughs> yeah, that's like super soft. I had the reservoir, <clears throat> coolant reservoir model off to uh to get to the DME because there's like two different ground modules and the DME's behind that. I flashed a camera at that this morning. I don't know how much of that you can make sense, but the big silver one's the DME and uh, the main ground module and then there's a secondary or general module is what they refer to it. <laughs> it's, it's a chassis control module or a ground control module, whatever. It's one of them. Anyway, there's two of them on this one. 
Oh, the uh, the 22 um, 1250 GS. Um, I ran through the measures plans and sorted that one out yesterday. It was uh, it was having crazy things going on. Well, I got all this brake stuff. He supplied Brembo brake pads and and rotor, and we got his uh, got that all fixed yesterday. And then uh, I went on a mission to figure out why am I getting all these codes for the LED headlight. And um, anyway, went through. I mean, I thought I was running the same thing as this because uh, there's like, I don't know, 10 codes, maybe more related to that. And um, when I go into the measures plan, there's three measures plans. And um, so I went through the first one, everything's good. And continue diagnosing. If you're still having a problem, I was like, Hey, look, I'm here for your help. You designed this monstrosity, and this your setup is supposed to help us, you know, pinpoint stuff. So in the second one, I run into the same thing. Just I thought it was the same thing I was running into with this. I had to create a measures plan. You can do that, and that's how I found it. It finally came up with a thing saying um, the. Uh, uh, reverser control module is not communicating with the CAN bus system. It says replace the the module and then, you know the scary thing after that it says after replacing module if you're still having the same issue continue diagnosing. You know we can't see inside these non-serviceable computers and modules so we rely on all this computer stuff to throw us a bone you know but uh, anyway, the, the measures plans I originally did didn't tell me nothing. But back to the GS, I think I talked about this thing before. I created my own, it told me what it was, put it in, it fixed it. I knew it was going to fix it because there was I could verify that the CAN bus lines from the module were intact and functioning. But this one, uh, the third measure I went through um, on the GS it said the um i got to some point and it was uh i think i was doing a ground check at some point or whatever and once i said that was good it says um that the led headlight control module is faulty so uh we got one coming it looks like a regulator rectifier you know the little thing with fins and you guys especially with older bikes you know what that looks like i don't think anything uses that nowadays it's all done through a a ground module of some sort or wherever they do it I don't know you just don't have any of that normal stuff nowadays oh, we got a lot of traffic coming out of here today these things if you don't use the shift assist pro man they just they they clank well a Harley's clank is because you ever seen how the detent works on those things when that thing falls into gear the hand of God couldn't knock that thing back out of gear. You don't get no false neutrals in those. That clank is that thing going whack. This is a shift drum coming to a very solid, precise stop. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm assuming kind of the same thing's going on here because that's kind of what it sounds like. But I've gotten false neutrals out of these things. So look at the leaves on the ground. I, just, I see all that on the ground. I go, mm -hmm. hey, fever coming. <laughs> well, I kind of took a long test ride today. <laughs> She's looking like, what the heck? Some spaceships coming down the... way smoother to use the shift assist pro but to me that's that's a habit forming and I've uh, I've shifted my uh, street glide special and I haven't done that to my road king because by then I, I quit using <laughs> the shift assist pro I you know doing a service whatever I'll I use it to make sure it functions and um, that's it I don't make any practice of using it 
um, on those trips on the GSAs absolutely I use it it's going along I'm in a nice comfortable spot I just I'm not reaching up to the to the clutch lever just push the little shift lever and she just does it for me so yeah in that sense very nice oh we need to do a reverse thing here so come to a stop kick her in the in the oops not second but neutral hit your little R button and you hit your starter button that's it kick it out hit the button again put it in gear and roll that's all you gotta do how long has it been since I walked around a B model K1600 BMWs and their slippery transmissions boy you, you're, you can hardly ever get these things in neutral. Some bikes are hard to get in neutral because they're stiff. These just go past it. <laughs> this is a 2018. And the guy had just bought it. Some guy, some place had it. They are blowing it out. And he bought it and right away the uh, reverse didn't work. She's a beaut. She's a big old gal. I don't think it has hardly any miles on it. Nine, yeah, just just shy of ten, ten thousand. All right. As fun as, as fun as it is that it's not pouring down rain like it is north of us here. I mean, it absolutely poured all day yesterday at home and uh, it was nice here the sun's been out here about two or three times in fact when I got done with this thing I was doing paperwork and stuff and I look out and I see that it's starting to get cloudy like this I told Tim I said move some stuff out of the way this K1600 has to get past he's putting a EV Polaris side by side together and, and um, pushed her out here we go for a test ride That's at 24 RR. That's 1000 RR. I think a guy with a standard R, it's the M series. I guess I should quantify it with that. Um, but anyway, a guy with, with an RR, I don't know what year his was, um, is looking at buying that. That's one expensive, incredibly cool motorcycle. Anyway. Sitting on the Grand America, I'm going to bid you do. And uh, the rest part of the video will probably go to a goodbye from this. So uh, in advance, hope you enjoyed your weekend. Well, hello there, YouTube. The beginning, it's actually kind of dry here, At the but moment? we went through a lot of rain. I think the rain was chasing us. It's coming this way. Yeah, it's awfully dark back there. So Sasha and Annie are getting their little run in while they can. Yep. Before they start, well, Sasha starts wooing. Yeah, Annie Mama. just goes like, yeah, I'm it's raining. Uh, yeah, Annie don't care. Mm -mm. She just stands there in the rain, don't care. Sasha <laughs> hides on the bench. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna get she wet. Goes, it's touching me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, she's pitiful. Yeah. But then sometimes, you know, you put her on a runner and she just goes walking mm. right out there in the rain. She comes in soaking wet. Like, Holy moly. Did you get stuck out there? <laughs> <laughs> I know, no. But, Anyway, the weekend has begun. It has. Heck yeah. So. Very we'll, nice. We'll roll at that. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give her a thumbs up. And you guys have a wonderful Saturday or Sunday. Heck yeah. All right. We'll see you in the morning. We'll see you then. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.